facts about the lost Prince Maharaja Dulip Singh. Let's begin. 1. He had a heart-wrenching childhood. Maharaja Ranjit Singh, known as the Lion of the Punjab, and his strong wife Jean Kwa were two pillars of the Sikh Empire, and Maharaja Dulip Singh was their only child. However, this heritage couldn't protect him from terror. Despite having eight older half-brothers, seven of them passed away before Dulip was even a young child. And sadly for the young lad, that was only the beginning of his misfortunes. 2. He hardly even knew his father. Dulip appeared to be born under a negative omen while holding royal titles. After all, Maharaja Anjit Singh, his father, was already terminally ill when Dulip was born and had passed away from a stroke before he turned one. Dulip just had the stories of his father's heroic deeds to live by because he never had a chance to know him personally. 3. He became king when he was in kindergarten. Dulip succeeded to the throne by unthinkable violence, like so much else in his life. He was only five years old when his older half-brother Sher Singh, the ruling Maharaja, was killed. He had only been in power for three years. The youngster was forced into the role by his mother Jind Kwa since the throne was unsteady and potentially deadly. Then his problems truly began. 4. At the age of eight, he was defeated in his first war. Dulip suffered his first humiliating loss in 1846 at the hands of his oncoming worst enemies, Britain. The young monarch and his mother suffered terrible losses in terms of power and territory during the Anglo-Sikh War. 5. He had been a young bridegroom. Jind, Dulip's mother, engaged Dulip with Teshkwa, the daughter of a strong governor and noble from another province, in order to increase her son's influence. It was believed that with this new partnership, Dulip would finally come out on top. But destiny had one more surprise in store. 6. He had rebelled. The British, who were closely monitoring Dulip and his mother, immediately put a stop to the idea of him getting married in order to keep him dependent on them. Has this stopped Dulip? No. Even though he was unable to marry his fiancée, he and his mother continued to object to British pressure, frequently refusing to give in to their requests. That is when everything finally started to go worse. 7. The British jailed his mother. The British were starting to understand that they were fighting with Dulip Singh and Jin Kwa, two powerful opponents. Their reaction was incredibly cruel. They imprisoned Jin, brutally separated her from her son, and cut her pension by more than two-thirds in order to get at Dulip through his mother. However, that was only the start of the terror. 8. His enemies were vicious. Even though Dulip had previously suffered several months without his mother, he was going to learn what actual separation felt like. The British cruelly decided that jail wasn't punishment enough, so they took Dulip's mother to a remote fort, deported her from Punjab, and even stole her priceless jewelry, to make her even more helpless. 9. For more than a decade, he didn't see his mother. Sadly, Jin Kwa's exile was long and severe. Even though the Maharani was able to leave the palace and go to Nepal, it took her 13 whole years to return to her beloved son because she was trapped there for 11 of those years. The British prevented Dulip from seeing her even once throughout this time. 10. His crown was lost. The Second Anglo-Sikh War followed the First Anglo-Sikh War, which was unfortunate for the young Maharaja. It brought serious disaster in 1849. The Sikh Empire was destroyed beyond repair that year. At the age of just 10, Dulip lost his reign along with everything. The British, who had a murderous Maharaja out of a job on their hands, transferred Dulip to the care of Dr. John Logan, a Scottish surgeon. 11. He was a king in captivity. Dulip traveled to Fatagar from Lahore far away without a mother or a kingdom. His captors severely restricted who he could see while he was there, aside from British yes-men servants, his wardens banned him from privately interacting with any of his fellow Indians and their motivations for doing this were horrifying. 12. He changed in some way. 
the British were openly and shamelessly trying to destroy everything of the Sikh traditions for Duleep in order to replace them with British culture when they sent him to live with Dr. John Login, and tried to change the religion of Duleep into Christianity. 13. He was terminally ill. Young Duleep's frequent ill health was most certainly a result of this policy of intense, personalized colonization. However, the British gained greater power as he became weaker. 14. He converted to Christianity. Something in Duleep broke in 1853. He underwent a rigorous crash course in Britishness after which he became a Christian at the age of 14, much to the joy of Dr. Login and the other British ministers surrounding him. The Sikh Empire's nominal Maharaja was no longer a Sikh. 15. He was kidnapped by the British. Like his mother before him, Duleep was exiled by the British authorities in 1854. They sent him to England instead of an Indian fortress, unlike his mother. Describe it as phase two of their make him a Brit agenda. And it performed really well. He spent almost the entirety of his brief life in England, where he created quite a sensation. 16. He was used as a toy by Queen Victoria. At this time, the British were acting as the good cop, so they started showering Duleep with praises and throwing him parties and dinners. When he arrived to Queen Victoria's court, she and her husband Prince Albert took a shine to him and showered him with their royal attention. Even the Queen sent an invitation for him to stay at Osborne House, her country home. 17. He was a crush of Queen Victoria. Victoria developed a strong affection for the young Duleep. All of this happened despite the fact that Victoria was Duleep's superior and over 20 years his senior. When it suited her, she didn't mind stretching that stance. 18. He was a royal genius. Duleep became into a sort of royal obsession while residing at Osborne House. Prince Albert took photos of him while Queen Victoria herself drew him. Although it appeared that the British had defeated Duleep once more through absorption, Duleep was actually fighting to escape. 19. He quickly grew tired of England. Within a year of his stay in England, Duleep wanted to return to India and pleaded with the authorities for permission to do so. The British rejected his request because they were still scared by his authority and then recommended he travel across Europe instead. 20. His bribery by the British. The British granted Duleep, then 17 years old, a £25,000 annual pension in order to make him stay in UK. But there were a lot of conditions attached. The Queen would only give Duleep this pension if he agreed to stay faithful to the British authority. He maintained his promise, for a while, despite the fact that he owned a kingdom. 21. He was a mama's baby. When Duleep turned 18, he suddenly began to think about his mother Jind, who was still hiding out in Kathmandu, Nepal, cursing the British and terrified for her life. Duleep wrote to her in an attempt to reconnect with her and invited her to go to England with him. This letter was captured by the British, who made sure she never received it. Duleep had no choice but to try again. 22. He was a fighter. Duleep made another attempt to contact his mother. He informed his mother that he wanted to see her this time by sending a local person as compared to a letter. Duleep's courier was also tracked and stopped by Victoria's henchmen, who kept them from reaching Maharani Jind. So Duleep had to think outside the box. 23. He was prepared with a few tricks. Duleep quickly understood that the only man for the job was his own damn self. To avoid British eyes and move closer to his mother, he wrote to the British resident in Kathmandu while cleverly hiding his letter within one from his guardian, Dr. Login. This ruse was successful since the resident replied with an update on Jind. The letter's information was upsetting. 24. He received disturbing news. Although the years had not been kind to Duleep Singh, his mother had suffered so much worse. Because of her own strong opposition to their authority, the British previously referred to Jind as the Messalina of the Punjab, but the letter duly pre indicated her terrible current situation. 
She had lost a lot of her usual fire and was now blind. 25. He and his mother were reunited at last. Because of the Maharani's decline, the British were no longer as terrified of her. They finally gave Dulip the chance to visit her for the first time since he was a young lad after learning about her themselves. At Spence's Hotel in Calcutta, the touching reunion took place in January 1861, when Dulip was 22 and his mother was getting close to middle age. Yet again, the British had misjudged the previous rulers of India. 26. He almost started a war. A number of Sikh battalions came to Calcutta at the same time when Dulips was meeting with his mother. Their reaction almost resulted in a disaster. They protested outside Spence's hotel when they learned that their Maharaja and his mother were in town, scaring the British with fear of possible rebellion. 27. He was deeply brainwashed. When they observed the soldiers assembling in the name of Dulip, the British were so horrified that Lord Canning, the Governor-General of India, personally requested that Dulip board the next boat return to England in order to put an end to the disturbance. Dulip agreed, which was good for Canning since it prevented him from resuming the struggle for his rightful kingdom. Dulip, however, fought in different ways. 28. He recovered the Maharani's gold. Dulip fought to bring his mother's long-lost gems back to her since he was dissatisfied with the mother's in reunion. Even though it was not their kingdom, but it was at least something, that he could give his mother the respect she deserved. But everything arrived too late and too little. 29. He said goodbye tragically. The very worst loss of Dulip's life hit in 1863. His mother Jin Kwa passed away at the still young age of 46, only a year after moving to Britain, after finally giving up on a lifetime of suffering. Even though Dulip was at least by her side when it occurred, it was little satisfaction considering how many years the British had taken away from him. But when one phase of his life came to a close, another started. It was also juicy. 30. The British wouldn't allow him to properly bury his mother. The following year, Dulip traveled to Bombay to bury his mother's ashes because the British would not permit him to do so in Lahore, where she was born. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please, like, share, comment and subscribe the channel. Press the bell icon for regular notifications. And stay tuned for next part.